Good morning. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Uniform Commercial Code. Now, legal scholars today consider the Uniform Commercial Code as one of the most important developments in American law. Prior to the creation of the Uniform Commercial Code, now which we commonly know as the UCC, many business owners were unsure which law would apply to a transaction in which a merchant shipped a product manufactured in one state to a second or even a third state. Now, at the time, governing laws in the states differed, and the laws that govern contracts between merchants, between shippers, between manufacturers, and between consumers all differed. In 1942, a group of legal scholars began to work on one of the longest and most uh, comprehensive sets of commercial codes. Now, the Uniform Commercial Code is not a law. Instead, it is a proposed law, a model law, if you will. And two organizations, the American Law Institute and the National Conference of Commissioners on uh, Uniform State Laws, jointly developed the code, and they did so with the idea in mind of reflecting how business is done in the real world. Now, as I said, the purpose of the code was to harmonize all the states, the law of the states, governing sales and commercial transactions, to make the laws the same so that it didn't matter if you were selling a product within your state borders or you were selling that product across the country. The code universalized commercial transactions and provided state governments with a set of laws to govern business transactions. Now, there are nine articles to the UCC. They address various aspects of sales, including the sale of goods, the leases of goods, negotiable instruments, bank deposits, fund transfers, letters of credit, investment securities, and secured transactions. It took 10 years of work to put the code together and to put it out into the country for states to adopt. And Pennsylvania was the first state to adopt it. But over the next 10 years, the code was eventually adopted in virtually every state in the United States. The major exception was and is Louisiana, which has its own law governing the sale of goods. And if you are ever going to do business in Louisiana, best to have a Louisiana lawyer uh, work on your contracts. Now, the code provides protections to both merchants and consumers, and it does so in large part by reflecting the way that business is ordinarily done. The code wants to find a contract, wants to find an enforceable contract. So it did away with certain things like the mirror image rule, which is to say if an, off, if an acceptance doesn't exactly mirror the offer, then in fact it is not, uh, not, there's no contract. The UCC wants to find a contract. One of the ways it does that is by avoiding the need for formalities. So a party doesn't have to use the specific word offer for the parties to understand that an offer was made. And the same with acceptance. Acceptance need not be a statement saying, I accept. It may simply be performance that looks like acceptance. Similarly, the UCC also favors uh, open-ended standards, uh, which are open to judicial interpretations rather than firm, bright line rules. The UCC wants there to be a contract and then wants the parties to perform the contract. So in conclusion, what did we learn today? Legal scholars consider the UCC one of the most important developments in American law. The purpose of the UCC was to harmonize law in all 50 states concerning sales and commercial transactions. And finally, the code provides protections to both merchants and consumers. That's all. Thanks for listening.